Today we will talk about Rabbi Eliezer ben Hawkins, one of the five students that Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai leaves behind. And mentioning in the Mishnah, we have the different descriptions by Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai about each and every of his students. So Rabbi Eliezer ben Hawkins is actually the student that is mentioned to be the a pit, Rabbi Eliezer ben Hokanus, a pit covered in plaster that does not lose a drop. And in a way, it's the exact extreme, the other side of the same spectrum, where we have Rabbi Eliezer ben Arach, that is an everlasting fountain that always creates new water, new ideas, new Torah. Rabbi Eliezer ben Hokanus is exactly the opposite a pit that doesn't lose a drop, meaning the water comes from the outside, not from the inside, but it is relevantly easy to take out the water and to use it. The pit, the pit that doesn't lose a drop, this is Rabbi Eliezer ben Hokanus. Rabbi Eliezer ben Hokanus has a very interesting life story. He grows up in a very, very wealthy family, a family with values in which his father, Hokenus, wants his sons to continue the legacy of the family and to be part of the hard work in order to make this money. And so we have a story in the Pirkei de Avot Natan, the Rabbi Natan, and, and I won't read it, but I will mention it, that they are together working the land. Suddenly, Eliezer stops and sits on the ground, starts crying, and his father asks him, why are you crying? And he says, my wish is to learn Torah. And his father say, but uh, you are 28 years old. You should marry a wife. You should raise kids, take them to school, and then you fulfill your dream through your kids. But Rabbi Eliezer is not satisfied with his um, answer. And then he fasts for a long time and he meets Eliyahu the prophet, Eliyahu Anavi. And again he cries, Eliezer ben Hokanus. And Eliyahu says to him, why are you crying? And Rabbi Eliezer answers, because my wish is to learn Torah. I want to learn Torah. So he sends him to Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakai to Lishkat Gazit in Yerushalayim. And Rabbi Eliezer goes to Yerushalayim and he meets Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakai. Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakai asks him, where are you coming from? From which family? Rabbi Eliezer doesn't want to say a thing. And he starts crying again and he says to him, why are you crying? And Rabbi Eliezer say, I want to learn Torah. So Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakai asks him, do you know how to pray? Do you know how to bench? Do you know how to say the Shema? He says, no, I've never been taught any of it. Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakai teaches him. Again, Rabbi Eliezer ben Hokanus cries. Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakai say to him, My son, why are you crying? Rabbi, Rabbi Eliezer ben Hokanus answers, My wish is to learn Torah. It feels like he repeats himself again and again. My wish is to learn Torah. Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakai say to him, Okay, I will teach him. And now we have a method that Rabbi Eliezer ben Hokanus starts. He learns two halachot per day thoroughly. And then on Shabbat, he repeats everything and combines the halachot together. One day, the sons of Hokanus say to their father, we think that you should dishonor your son and completely take him out of your will and he should be out of the family money because he's not working with us and he's not worthy for it. And so the father of Rabbi Eliezer ben Hokanus comes to Yerushalayim. And at that day, there is a festival that's been made by Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakai. And the different students say Divrei Torah. And for the first time, his father sees him teaching Torah. And the Midrash says that actually when Rabbi Eliezer ben Hokanus was teaching Torah, his face was glowing with light. There was so much light coming out of his face that people didn't even know if it was day or night. To an extent that Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakai comes and kisses his head and say, Oh, worthy you are, Israel, 
because look who came out of your loins. Happy you should be Yitzchak of Abraham, Yitzchak and Yaakov. And so his father sees all this and says to him that um, actually he was coming here um, to um, dishonor him, disinherit him, but now that he has seen him and the greatness of his, then behold, your brothers are disinherited and their portion is given to you as a gift. There is something else that we learn about the family of Hokanus that Rabbi Eliezer comes from because we learn that it's a black and white. It's either or. It's not like it's going to be completely split by the different siblings, but rather now that Hokanus sees the greatness of Rabbi Eliezer, then he gives it all to him. The famous story um, that we meet Rabbi Eliezer Ben Hokanus uh, at his greatest moment and also saddest moment is the story of the oven of Chnai. This story is actually a very famous story, but for some reason the ending is not always quoted. So we have here a, um, an oven that there is a dispute between the rabbis whether it is pure or impure. Rabbi Eliezer ben Orkanu says it's pure. This oven is pure. But all his ra the rabbis surrounding him, all his colleagues, disagree with him and say that it's, it's impure. The sages taught on that day when they discussed this matter, Rabbi Eliezer answered as all possible answers in the world to support his opinion. But the rabbis did not accept his explanations from him. So he's saying again and again all the different reasoning why this oven is actually pure, but his colleagues are not accepting his opinion. After failing to convince, the rabbis, logically, Rabbi Eliezer said to them, if the halakha is in accordance in my opinion, the carob tree will prove it. The carob tree was uprooted from its place 100 cubits, and some say 400 cubits. So suddenly Rabbi Eliezer ben Hokanus is using magical power in order to prove his halachic opinion. He says, if the halacha is in accordance to my opinion, the carob tree should move. And it's uprooted, moved 100 uh, cubits or 400 cubits, doesn't matter, but it moves. So again, it's, it's huge magic. The rabbi said to him, one does not cite halachic proof from the carob tree. Rabbi Eliezer then said to them, If the halakha is in accordance with my opinion, the stream will prove it. The water in the stream turned backward and began flowing in the opposite direction. They said to him, One does not cite halachic proof from the stream. I must say that reading the, between the lines, I can hear the sages still smiling. Soon enough, they will stop smiling. But currently, there is a smile in the discussion. Meaning Rabbi Eliezer is showing his power outside of nature, kind of a magical power to move a tree and uproot it, to change the, the, the stream of the water, which is an incredible thing. Rabbi Eliezer then said to them, if Halakha is in accordance with my opinions, the walls of the study hall will prove it. The walls of the study hall leaned inward and began to fall. Now it's not funny anymore because suddenly he gets the walls of the study hall to start pushing, almost falling on the heads of all the rabbis in the Beit Midrash. Rabbi Yeshua called the walls and said to them, if Torah scholars are contending with each other in matters of halacha, what is the nature of your involvement in this dispute? The Gemara relates, the walls did not fall because of the difference due Rabbi Yoshua, but they did not straighten because of the difference due Rabbi Eliezer. And they still remain leaning, meaning Rabbi Yoshua is stopping the walls from falling. In a way, he's saying to Rabbi Eliezer ben Okenus, you think you have powers? Look, I have powers as well. Here, you're making the walls to lean. I'm going to stop them from leaning. But suddenly there is something else that is going on because Rabbi Eliezer ben Olkenus 
wants to get his opinion into halakha so badly, he doesn't mind killing everyone in the room. Rabbi Eliezer then said to them, if the halakha is in accordance with my opinion, heaven will prove it. A divine voice emerged from heaven and said, why are you differing with Rabbi Eliezer? As the halakha is in accordance with his opinion in every place that he expresses an opinion. Meaning he even brings a divine voice from the heaven to prove that halakha is in accordance with his opinion. Rabbi Yoshua stood on his feet and said, It is written, it is not in heaven. Lo bashamayimhi. Very famous quote coming right from here. The Gemara asks, What is the relevance of the phrase, It is not in the heavens in this context? Rabbi Yirmiyahu said, Since the Torah was already given at Mount Sinai, we do not regard a divine voice as you already wrote at Mount Sinai in the Torah after the majority to incline. Since the majority of rabbis disagrees with Rabbi Eliezer's opinion, the halakha is not ruled in accordance with his opinion. So we have here even a divine voice that comes from the heavens to support the opinion of Rabbi Eliezer ben Horkenus. And the sages completely disagree with that and say no it is not in the heaven and we do not learn halakha from a divine voice rather we should be deciding here between us the gemara relates years after rabbi natan encountered eliyahu again eliyahu is mentioned in the story of rabbi eliezer ben horkenus in a way to tell us that just like eliyahu the prophet there is something about Rabbi Eliezer ben Horkenus that is divine, that is outside of this world, that is unnatural, that is magical, just like Eliyahu the prophet. So he meets Eliyahu the prophet and said to him, What did the Holy One, blessed be he, do at that time? When Rabbi Yoshua issued the declaration, Eliyahu said to him, The Holy One, blessed be he, smiled and said, my children have triumphed over me. My children have triumphed over me. Nitzchuni banai, nitzchuni banai. The sages say, on that day, the sages brought all the ritual, the pure items deemed pure by the ruling of Rabbi Eliezer, which with regard to the oven and burned them in fire. And the sages reached a consensus in his regard and austerized him meaning the sages take it very dramatically and for a good reason that Rabbi Eliezer ben Horkenus was willing to kill everyone in the Bet Midrash to have his opinion taken as halakha. And so they decide to ostracize him, but it's not an easy decision to make because Rabbi Eliezer ben Horkenus is great. He is, 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 is a huge Talmud Chacham. And they decide to ostracize him. And the sages said, who will go and inform him of his ostracism? Rabbi Akiva said to them, I will go. Least an unseemly person go and inform him in a close and offensive manner. And he will thereby destroy the entire world. Rabbi Akiva says something that is extremely clever and delicate. He says, we've seen the power of Rabbi Eliezer ben Horkinus. And this is a dangerous moment because if something, someone that is unworthy or someone does it in an undelicate way, Rabbi Eliezer ben Horkenus might ruin the entire world. What did Rabbi Akiva do? He wore black and wrapped himself in black as an expression of mourning and pain and sat before Rabbi Eliezer at a distance of four cubits which is the distance that one must maintain from an austerized individual. Rabbi Eliezer said to him, Akiva, what is different about today from other days that you comfort yourself in this manner? Rabbi Akiva said to him, my teacher, it appears to me that your colleagues are distancing themselves from you. He employed a fusion as actually they distanced Rabbi Eliezer from them. Rabbi Eliezer too ran his garments and removed his shoes as in custom of an austerized person 
and he dropped from his seat and sat upon the ground. The Gemara relates his eyes shed tears and the result, the entire world was afflicted. One third of its olives were afflicted and one third of its wheat and one third of its barley. Meaning we have Rabbi Eliezer sitting on the ground and weeping and crying and for that the world is being afflicted. A third of its olive, a third of its barley, a third of its wheat completely destroyed. And some say that even though needed in a woman's hands spoiled, the sages thought there was great anger on that day as any place that Rabbi Eliezer fixed his gaze was burned. And even Rabban Gamliel, the Nasi of the Sanhedrin of Yavne, the head of the sages, who were responsible for the decision to ostracize Rabbi Eliezer, was coming on a boat at the time, and a large wave swelled over him and threatened to drown him. Rabban Gamliel said, It seems to me that this is only for the sake of Rabbi Eliezer ben Horkenus, as God punishes those who mistreat others. Rabban Gamliel stood on his feet and said, Master of the universe, it is revealed and known before you that neither was it for my honor that I acted when authorizing him, nor was it for the honor of the house of my father that I acted. Rather, it was for your honor, so that disputes will no longer be in Israel. In response, the sea calmed from its raging. This is from the Gemara, from Bava Metzia, 59b. Meaning Rabban Gamliel, who is at the time the head of Sanhedrin, who is in charge of the decision to ostracize Rabbi Eliezer ben Horkenus, understands that he is about to die in the sea because of the pain that he caused. And he stops that by talking to Hashem and explaining the reasoning of ostracizing Rabbi Eliezer ben Horkenus. The ostracizing of Rabbi Eliezer ben Horkenus, even though it is the right thing to do, because we cannot have that extremist idea in Judaism that it's either halakha in his opinion or everybody should die in the Beit Midrash, even though it's the right thing to do, it has huge impact in the world. At the end of his life, the different sages come to say goodbye to Rabbi Eliezer ben Horkenus and they are sitting surrounding him and Rabbi Eliezer ben Horkenus has a prophet saying, I wonder if your deaths will be natural. And Rabbi Akiva asks him, my death as well? And Rabbi Eliezer ben Horkenus answers, yours shelcha kasha mikulam. Yours will be the toughest. Meaning there is an impact of austerizing Rabbi Eliezer ben Horkenus, huge impact that stays way after, even though it is the right thing to do. And it's an interesting thought that Rabbi, Eli, Rabbi Akiva knew for a very portion, big portion of his life that his death is not going to be a natural death. And he lived with that thought. This is the story of Rabbi Eliezer ben Horkenus, a young man that starts from a very wealthy family, that comes to Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai, that studies, that creates a new method of studying, a great student that is like a pit that doesn't lose a drop ever and that takes an extreme way of halakha and he needs his halakha to be only in accordance with his opinion to an extent that we see in the oven of Achnai and eventually is being ostracized by his colleagues and stays alone for the rest of his life. This is the story of Eliezer ben Horkenus not an easy story, still extremely important, a very important voice in Judaism to have our great legacy of the sages stay and, and, and connected and, and, and alive within the opinion of today, to remember and remain everything that we were taught by them. Thank you.